So today I wanted to do something a bit different and show off a new game I got called World Box. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, I just think it's a really cool game. And basically what it is, is this easygoing sandbox where you can create a world and essentially play God, watching civilizations grow, alter the terrain, and spawn in literally whatever you want from crocodiles to tornadoes. And you can intervene in the little NPCs' lives as much or as little as you desire. If you liked bullying civilized empires in the space stage of Spore, then this game is definitely for you. I was playing it the other night and talking to some of the guys over on the channel Discord, a link will be down below if you want to join, and I thought to myself, what if I let Worldbox just play itself for 24 hours and don't interact with the NPCs at all? And then I put that on 5 times speed. Leave a like if you enjoy, and let's get into this. While I wanted to be as hands-off as possible for this playthrough, I did at the very start need to do a couple of things. I started off by changing around the world a bit with some new biomes to make the terrain feel a bit more diverse, as in the beginning it was all basically one biome. And then I had to spawn in some actual NPCs to populate the world. So first, I started with elves in the only candy biome on the map, yes that's a thing, then I spawned in some dwarves in the middle of a snowy forest, sprinkled some orcs between two small mountains, and last, but definitely not least, I spawned in a bunch of humans on the southeast coast in a little forest clearing, and this would be the start of civilization. In the beginning, everything started off peaceful with each tribe kind of doing its own thing. The orcs and the humans were the first to expand, with the humans going north, and the orcs sort of spreading themselves thin and just going all over the place. After a while, the dwarves also began expanding north, while the elves seemingly intended to stay put and build up what they had. All was calm and tranquil in the land of Worldbox, until the orcs started a massive invasion of the human settlements to their northeast. Right when I thought the orcs were about to wipe out humanity altogether right in the beginning, they stopped, as they seemed to only have an issue with the green human kingdom and not the white one. Or so I thought at first. After returning to their camps about five minutes later, the orcs decided that the white kingdom of humans were now their sworn enemy for some reason, and began to burn down their cities. In general, I find that the orcs in Worldbox are very aggressive for some reason, like these guys hate everything that isn't them, and we're gonna see more of that in a little bit, but before we do, let's go check on the elves. And the elves all got wiped out when I wasn't looking. But on the bright side, the dwarves have expanded and grown their kingdom to something pretty formidable. The humans are still kicking, though their numbers have been greatly reduced. And while I'd love to intervene, for the purpose of this video, I'm letting the game just play itself, and I'm just a passive observer. As the orcish invasion of the humans continues, and strange clouds that rain bubbles sweep across the land, the dwarves enter what appears to be some sort of civil war and end up destroying their own society from within. In a matter of minutes, the conflict significantly decreases each dwarven city's population, and it's just as the war seems to reach some kind of peace agreement that the orcish hordes arrive and destroy everything. What really stands out to me here is the sheer brutality of these orcs. They didn't come to the dwarven lands for their food or their resources, they weren't even coming to just take over the town, they seemed to have come exclusively to kill and shed blood. They wanted to get rid of every single dwarf they found just for the sake of it, as when they were done killing, they just left. They didn't take anything, they didn't build a new town in its place, they just left it in ruins and returned home to their own cities, that were now taking up half of the entire map. With the humans, elves, and now dwarves gone, this left the orcs as the only intelligent race left on the planet. With this, there was a very brief period of world peace, until the orcs realized killing was their hobby and with no other races left to kill, they turned on each other. For literal in-game years, this orcish civil war would go on indefinitely, ultimately leaving no trace of the original unified orc kingdom, as its descendants overthrew and destroyed their creators. A people destroyed and a land divided, it was time for me to go to sleep. What I would wake up to the next morning was shocking. After leaving the game running all night long, I woke the next morning to find that nearly all of the orc kingdoms that existed when I went to bed were gone, bar the white one who had apparently expanded, building large cities on the land of its conquered enemies. All this expansion, however, seemed to have drawn the ire of the light blue kingdom, who then promptly invaded and ended the white kingdom's overnight reign of terror, all over the course of me eating breakfast. Then, there was a small village founded by an offshoot of the Light Blue Kingdom on the volcanic island to the northeast, but it didn't last long with the inhabitants succumbing to some kind of ash-related illness and turning into these fire monsters before attacking their own people. Oh, and the volcano that was on the island mysteriously vanished. Not sure how that happened. 
Going back to the mainland, the Light Blue Kingdom had conquered the entire continent and eventually went back to fighting amongst themselves, not surprisingly. But not before a small pink kingdom would send an expeditionary force to the volcanic island to see what came of its former inhabitants. Upon arrival, the expeditionary force were all instantly killed, and no one went back there for a while as there were now literally flaming skull crabs running around the place. Checking back a few hours later, and I saw that there was now a brand new purple kingdom on the volcanic island with two decently sized cities that were actually doing quite well for themselves, as their presence on the isolated islands kept them away from the never-ending conflict on the mainland that was now being fought between a light green kingdom and a red kingdom. Eventually, the greens would overtake the reds and have control over the entire continent once again unifying it, but as history keeps repeating itself on this world, it wasn't long as one town rebelled and formed a new kingdom. At this point, it seems like the whole world is just trapped in an endless cycle of the civil wars between the orcs. It really makes me wonder if all the races in the game are the same, or if we would see something totally different had a different one like the elves or humans come to power. After all, we did see quite early on that the dwarves fought amongst themselves before being destroyed by the orcs, so we know that they have a lot of infighting as well, but again, what if it was humans or elves, would they act differently? Maybe another experiment for another video. As the Age of Moon continued to drag on, the Orc continent found itself engulfed in a war between these three massive kingdoms, while the Purple Kingdom just continued to chill on its island, seemingly sending trade ships to everyone and profiting off the war. Some sort of social commentary, maybe? As the conflict raged on, there was one point where the Orcs seemed to be fighting... ghosts. I think. I'm not sure, but the original candy biome I had placed the elves in seemed to be shrinking, and in its place was a massive swamp and some kind of haunted biome. And that's where these little white ghost looking things came from, so I'm not sure what that was all about, but the orcs defeated them pretty quickly and then went back to killing each other. It seems like the orc NPCs tend to do that, where they'll unite to fight and kill anything that comes their way if it's an external threat, but as soon as there's any peace, they fall into fighting each other without skipping a beat. It's interesting how the developers thought to program that behavior in, and I really appreciate the level of detail. I came back a couple hours later to check up on them, and I found that the mainland had once again seemingly united around a new religion of sorts, with multiple orc towns chanting... something. While there was probably the longest period of peace on the mainland, just like their predecessors, Purple Kingdom's population was decimated by an ash storm and the illnesses it caused. Their population was reduced by about half, though they quickly recovered and rebuilt under the guidance of their wounded king. But fate would not spare them for long, as their trading partner, the now unified Lime Green Kingdom, would see their weakness as an opportunity to invade. This, however, must have upset some within the Empire, and once again the continent was plunged into civil war. All the stress caused by the chaos and destruction was too much for this one crab, who decided enough was enough and for some reason was trying to topple the former Purple Kingdom statue of a dragon because reasons. And then he got a flaming skull to join in on the action before the orcish riot police came to the island and shut it down. Okay, kingdoms profiting off war by both sides, islands on fire, and rioters toppling statues. World Box is seeming more like a simulator than I initially thought. As the time crept closer to 24 hours, I prepared myself to check on what has so far been the longest lasting world I've ever made. As soon as I got off work and made it through the door, I went over to check on my computer. There was only 20 minutes or so left on the timer, so I went to wash some dishes and pay attention to my cat. When I came back, within a minute of sitting down, I was greeted with a beeping sound signifying I had unlocked the Life is a Sim achievement, my unintended reward for running a world for 24 continuous hours. So where does that leave our Orc Kingdoms? Well, in the end, they perhaps unsurprisingly never found peace. They were constantly fighting each other even after 24 hours. The volcanic islands to the northeast that had been such a source of death and misery for the Orcish people did finally recover, seemingly for the last time. The fires were put out, new dwellings were built, and the Orcs founded one new lime-colored kingdom with the bustling trade port on the northern part of the island. They rebuilt the dragon statue that had once been torn down by an angry crab, and civilization lived on and prospered for their people, as no one saw fit to invade them due to their secluded location. Back to the rest of the world, the mainland enjoyed a very brief period of peace during the last minute of the challenge, but right as it concluded, it broke out into yet again another civil war amongst the various changing factions. Eventually, it would once again be the Green Kingdom that would come to unify the Orc Continent, though as we've seen before, history will keep repeating itself. Though perhaps, this time, it doesn't have to. All good things must come to an end, including the Orcs.
Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it. It'll help me out a lot. Subscribe if you want to see more. Check out my other content. Like I said, this is something different for me just because I really like this game. And thank you again for watching if I haven't already said that. Have a great day. And as always, stay safe. Goodbye.